So, Joe Gloriosa, Hoop District, the owner of the Washington Wizards and uh, Mighty Mother Sports, uh, Ted Leonsis. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about today's event, as well as uh, a little, a couple questions about the Wizards, current Wizards team. Okay. So let's get started with the most important thing, why we're here today. We're going to honor Wes Unseld. Uh, you're a man who takes homage to, uh, to the next level. The Bullets fans know you really care about this team and the history. What does Wes Unseld mean to you? Uh, well, Wes Unseld is uh, probably the most iconic uh, Bullet Wizard player ever. Obviously in the Hall of Fame, obviously part of the championship winning team, went to the finals, and just had this way about him so unique, a rookie entering the league and ending up being Rookie of the Year and MVP, had I think one of the signature moves of all time in the NBA. I've never seen anybody rebound, pivot, and throw the ball down court as an outlet pass with more strength than he did. And then he came into the organization, was coach, was general manager, and really is a uh, a person who crossed generations. And the time that I've spent with Wes, his perspective of what universal truths there are about basketball and players, yet what you should you should discount because it's different eras and different cultures and the like. And he's a very very wise man, and as I've said, he's a Hall of Fame player, but he's even better father, even better husband. And he's so involved with the community that he's coming back here to let us raise money for scholarship for students in Washington, D.C. Um, means a lot to us. And, you know, Wes, is, um, Wes is very selective with the organizations that he works with. And it should be fun because we are paying homage to him, but it is a roast. And I won't be ro roasting him. <laughs> I'll be too respectful, but I'm sure some of his teammates will give it to him pretty good. Now, uh, you went to Georgetown. If I'm not mistaken, you played a little basketball yourself. I did. Correct? Yeah. And um, were you a Bullets fan back back in the day? I well? actually hated the Bullets when I was growing up because <laughs> as a little kid, I, I grew up in New York. And I mean, those were wars. And, um, and Earl the Pearl was you know, one of my favorite players, and he played both for the Bullets and with the Knicks. Uh, but after I moved here uh, to go to Georgetown, and then I ended up in Washington, D.C., I obviously changed my, my allegiance. And then obviously since 1999, when I bought into the team, uh, they're the only team that, that I like and respect. And, and I, I do think paying respect to the great players regardless of era is a very, very important role for ownership to play. We've had some unbelievably talented players and great teams, and, and but Wes is the pinnacle. I mean, the West played, uh, Bobby Dandridge is here, West played with um, Elvin Hayes, they're both top 50 players of all time, and they won a championship. And, all the owners kind of sense are trying their best to also bring the championship here. Um, and so sitting and learning from your elders, if you will, and taking advice from people like Wes Unseld is, a, I think, a really smart thing to do because he's been there and done it. And the last couple of years, you've really made a focus about alumni coming back, the Bullets alumni coming back, all the Wizards players coming back. How important do you think that is to the current team, John Wall, Bradley, to see those gentlemen who actually had success in the city. How important is that to you? And how important do you think it is to them? Um, you know, it's interesting when we interview players before we draft them, or now before we trade for them, during interviews we probe to see are they students of history. And um, it's remarkable how, how much film, how much old series, how much time John Wall has spent not only understanding this franchise, but the roots of the NBA. Uh, same with Bradley Bill. They are very, very appreciative. And <clears throat> when they when there are events and we introduce and we say this is Elvin Hayes, he goes, Oh my gosh, and it's because they know they, they won championships, they they were uh, Elvin Hayes was one of the most historic college players of all time. Um, I remember 
Bradley Beal telling me that he saw the UCLA-Houston game that was played in the Astrodome, uh, that when, when Houston beat UCLA and broke the winning streak. And, and, and so I, 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 I think that's a part of their integrity. I think that they're, they're respectful to their, their history. That, that I, I notice that when one of the alums walks in, if John or Bradley are sitting down, they'll immediately get up and make eye contact and shake their hand and they'll talk because they understand that they can learn a lot from these great players who are in the league, especially if they're in the Hall of Fame or sure. they've been all-stars or they've led the league in scoring or, or whatever. And so I'm very um, attuned to that and we're fortunate that our young, really good players are students of the game. Now we uh, kind of segue a little bit into, uh, we're talking about Hall of Fame players. You recently added a Hall of Fame player to your roster, Paul Pierce. And I can only imagine as an owner, this is kind of like uh, NBA 2K15 here, and you're getting to add Paul Pierce onto a roster like that. That's got to be exciting for you, but you also got to be excited what he's bringing to your kids, what, what he's bringing to, say, kids, obviously, but John and Bradley and the things that they're going to teach. Um, well, we were very fortunate that Paul was available in free agency but that also our community and city had developed enough that as he would come here, whether with Boston or Brooklyn, to realize this was a great place to live, that his family, his wife would really enjoy it here, his kids would really enjoy the school system. And then he saw our team take that next step. And when you're in this stage of your career, you want to play in a team that you think can be very, very competitive and be a playoff team and do its damage in the playoffs. And so he kind of chose us. That's how I look at it. I think that he looked and said, good front court, good back court, lots of depth, um, and I can really contribute here and I can teach some of these young players. I know that. Otto Porter's getting a master's degree now and playing that position and he's just soaking it up. And just to have someone like him who's not intimidated by a LeBron James, who's, who's won a championship, who knows what to do in winning time. In my first conversation with him, that's what we talked about. I, Ted, I'm not gonna be able to give the team the long quality minutes. But at winning time or at the end of each quarter and at the end of the game, I feel really, really comfortable and and I know what to do with the ball, but I also know how to get other guys open and what to do with spacing and how to ratchet down on defense. And I'm gonna teach your guys who are very talented those little things that go from being really, really good to being a winner. And so, you know, I'm, I'm excited about having Paul Pierce, but I, I think how we're ultimately going to get better is our core, our young players, John and Bradley Beal and Otto Porter, will continue their upswing. And now we have so much depth, we can play our veteran players and manage their minutes because it's a very long season and hopefully it'll be a long playoff. One last question for you. We've got, um, Obviously, John Wall in his rookie year and a couple years after that took a lot of shots. A lot of shots for being the number one pick, having so much responsibility thrown on his shoulders. And now I kind of think the Washington area is doing a little bit of the same thing to RG3. As an owner, when it comes to your franchise player like that, how much involvement do you actually get in there and, and try to get their spirits up? Because, I mean, it's got to be frustrating when you go out and you hear the sports talk radio, the media's bashing you, everybody's bashing you, but the potential, the athletic ability is there. You, you I, I think the, the key is um, setting a strategy, communicating and believing in that strategy and plan, and then keeping the faith. So we call it patience, um, and, and we were very open and honest when we bought the team. And I said, we, we are going to be really, really bad until we're really good. And it's going to be a very painful process, 
it'll probably take longer than we think. Um, but certainly in four or five years, we want to have a really, really good team. And that first year we were lucky, we won the lottery, we were able to draft John Wall. And it's amazing that John Wall, who's still a very young player, is still our most tenured player. And, and because he's a point guard, and he's the number one pick in the draft, and he has great gifts, we said that we believe in you, and we'll use the draft, we'll make some trades, we'll use free agency, and we'll have a good team. Stick with it. And we believe in you, you believe in us, and we'll do the right things the right way. And so John and I don't communicate a lot, but we do. Once every preseason, we'll have a chat, and then at the end of the season, to talk about what did we do, what do we have to do together to, to get better. And, and I think players appreciate that. They, they, don't, they don't appreciate emotional decisions, right? Because it's a long season, he's going to have great games, he's going to have bad games. It's, have you stuck with, with the strategy? And I think if you ask John, he say, we, we're in this together. And when you know that your front office, your coach, the fans, the organization, they're in it with you to win and to be supportive, a comfort grows there. And now where I think John is, is he made the all-star team, he won a playoff series, we made the playoffs, he has his big contract. John's only focused on one thing now, doing better than last year and winning a championship. And that's what you want your leader to be. Do what is necessary to win and make the team better. Because you already have all the individual things. You, you, you got your deal. Right. You, you, you said you wanted to be an all-star. You said you wanted to make the playoffs. Check, check, check. Right. Now the only thing you have to focus on is leading the team. And if you need to shoot, you shoot. If you need to pass, you pass. If you need to play defense. And, and I think that's where he, he is emotionally. He's mature and talented. And he knows that he'll now be defined by how well the team does, not by his individual status. Awesome. Joe Glorioso, Hoop District. Ted Leonsis, owner of the Washington Wizards. Thanks, guys. Thank you.